The day in the life of a sports photographer, through my lens. The type of gear I use is all held within a Think Tank Street roller bag. The type of cameras I use is a Canon R6 Mark II, which is a mirrorless camera, which is ranked as one of the best mirrorless cameras available on the market for sports photographers. It shoots at a speed of roughly almost 40 frames per second where basically if I were to go one Mississippi that would be 40 photos. The other camera I use is a Canon 6D Mark II which is also a very good camera. It's not as good as the R6 but it is a solid camera. It is not mirrorless, it is a DSLR which means that it has a mirror inside which is why when you go to some sporting events and you're able to hear the noises of the cameras, that's where you hear the click sound. For a mirrorless, it is quiet. Along with inside my camera bag, I also keep a case full of SD cards. All of these are used so that way any sort of photos or video that I capture always go on there and I always make sure that I keep a lot so that just in case if one fails, I have a lot to back it up. Along with those SD cards to store them on my computer, I keep an external hard drive. This hard drive is easy for me to be able to transfer all the photos directly from my camera onto my computer so that they're safely stored and I'm able to save space on my camera. And of course, you always need a computer so that way you can upload them quickly. Now the lenses. On a normal day, I usually use four lenses. The first lens that I use is a Canon 50mm. This lens is used for being close up. I usually use this lens specifically during warm ups. My go to lens though is this Canon 70 200. The 70 200 is a lens that I'm able to use in a variety of different aspects, is what I use for basketball, baseball, football, wrestling. The last lens I use is a 14mm. This lens is a very wide angle. Now, what I use to hold these cameras while I'm at games is these camera straps called Black Rapid. These straps are great as I'm able to hold two cameras simultaneously without having to worry about them falling off. So because of that, it's mandatory that you kneel down on the ground so that way you don't block people behind you who are trying to watch the game. So knee pads are important so you don't hurt your knees. Especially for this week, I made sure that I had a GoPro so I was able to capture everything. And since this video was taken before the UNC game, I knew it was going to be cold so I made sure I had gloves and a beanie just in case. And all of this goes inside my big camera bag. Now that I'm all packed up, now it's time to hit the road. The beginning of this video will be me traveling from Raleigh all the way to Virginia Tech and going through the walkthrough of how I get down to the media room and what are the main steps that I take. One of the main things that I like to familiarize myself with whenever I go to any sporting event is I always like to make sure to know how to get to the field from where I am. And where all of my gear is because it's essential to if I have a dead battery or if I have a SD card fail to always make sure where everything is so I can get there quickly and not miss a single minute of the action. It was sadly here that the GoPro died, but here are some photos from that game. Here's this past Saturday from the UNC game and the walkthrough of how I do everything at Carter-Finley Stadium. Game days at Carter-Finley are usually pretty easy. We park semi-close to the stadium and it's a pretty short walk to the media entrance. As you can see, they have to go through, check our bags, make sure that everything looks right. And then it's a quick little walk to the tower where we take an elevator all the way up to the top and unload everything and get ready for the day. It's usually here where many photographers make sure that they have everything. Uh, if they don't, they usually walk back to their cars. Um, 
tonight was one of those nights where I forgot some gloves in my car so I had to walk all the way back and make sure that I grabbed those before I started shooting the Walk of Champions as this was senior night. So I loaded up all my gear, made sure I only grabbed the two cameras that I needed and I made the quick walk right back to where I just began. One of the difficulties of taking pictures of Walk of Champions tonight was just how low light it was and how many people showed up. As the security people tried their hardest to keep people away, there was a lot of people blocking the shot that I had set up. So at that point I knew I had to react and so I made sure that I walked on the edge and made sure I could get that clean shot that I was looking for. After Walk of Champions, I finally went back up to the tower, warmed back up, had some food, and just waited before warm-up started. As it got closer to kickoff, I took the gear that I needed and I left my bag up in the tower and I walked all the way down to beneath the stadium where I left my laptop and the other lens that I didn't need. As you can see, I'm carrying a giant lens. That is a 400 millimeter lens, which I rent from a cool camera store here in Raleigh. That lens is awesome as it's able to get really up close and I'm able to get great shots from far distances. I know you, what you may be thinking is that lens looks pretty heavy. It's not, it's roughly like maybe 10 pounds at most, but it's a great lens to shoot with. However, it's very expensive and I don't have that kind of money. So just like for warm-ups at the Virginia Tech game, I didn't really use that big lens much. I only used my 70 to 200, which is a great lens for warm-ups, like I said. It's perfect to get some close-up while getting distance at the same time. One of the key parts about taking photos of games is making sure that I get the coaches shaking hands and everything and as you can see here I was trying to make sure I had all my gear straight before I noticed that both coaches were standing at the center of the field shaking hands and all of the photographers were moving towards them so I knew I had to move fast so you can see me here try to pick up the pace and make sure that I got that shot. Following warm-ups, I wanted to make sure that I got a shot of all of the team at least running by me before they came out of the tunnel to start the game. So as you can see, I'm standing right in front of the goalpost as they're all running by, by me. And I'm able to use that wide-angle lens to get everyone in frame all in one shot. As they came out of the tunnel, I made sure that I had both of my cameras ready using one wide angle lens and then my go-to lens at the same time so that I was able to get two different depths of field to create as many different variety of shots as possible. I used the 400 millimeter throughout the game to make sure that action is up close so that everyone can see what's going on. Here's a clip from the game where you can see me sitting on the edge of the field trying to make sure that I get that perfect shot. After the game is over, I go back up to the press box with all of my camera gear, my laptop and everything, and I sit down and make sure that I go through all of the photos. And I do something called a cull, which is where you go through all of the photos that you took and choose the best ones. It's from here where I choose the best ones and I put them into a photo editor where I take a few hours to make sure that they all look perfectly. Here's that process as I sped it up. By having those quality images that also tell a story is the best thing to do. And that's what I try to do every single time. For more information on anything, photography, or any interest in me taking photos of your next event, please check out my website.